Hey all, this is Martin from HowToMakeMobileGames.com on March the 9th, 2016, uh, Wednesday here in Shanghai, China, evening time. Uh, and to get right to it, this is a response video to Best Game Studios. Uh, one of the members on the forum, a uh, senior member who's been around for ages, uh, Best Game, thank you for all of the posts and response and information and sharing. Uh, you and the other members are awesome, so thank you so much for that. I, I did see your question on the, um, the which section was it? The Games Marketing Questions section. Um, and I'll just read it out for everyone to see. So uh, you said, hello Martin, something I've been thinking about. Someday I plan on hiring empl employees, so my question is, what is the best way to pay them uh, in the starting period? After all, if say I'm hiring somebody in uh, another faraway country, it wouldn't seem correct to say, okay, work for two weeks and I'll pay you. I'd be worried in that situation as an employee. What if the job giver just disappears or something, especially since I'm still just a single person, not some large company? Uh, how have you solved this issue? Thanks in advance. So yeah, it's, it's a good question. Um, what I'll do, I remember you also asked me a question a, a couple of weeks ago, I think, where you asked about uh, um, how do you trust somebody uh, uh, if you're hiring them overseas? So basically the opposite way. So I'll answer that first and then I'll answer this one. Uh, so the way that I would approach it is if you're looking to hire staff uh, remotely to work overseas and they're you know scattered in different countries uh, I think that's a really good way to go for a new studio where you have to watch your cost uh, one of the first things I think in any new business that doesn't have like a ton of money of investment is always keep your costs you know under control don't go buy in expensive offices and expensive computers and chairs and uh, you know you've got all these like insurance contracts and all of this stuff and um, that's that's a really expensive way to do it the second reason is that if you hire overseas in different countries uh, and you find them online the pool of experience and the pool of, of uh, talent is much larger hiring in one particular place is really hard I think and I found this with game development in general okay game development is like say like software development is this big okay like you've got all of these Tens of thousands of people who can do it, for example. Game development is then this big, you know what I mean? It's a lot smaller. Game development isn't as uh, studied a field as uh, general software development. You know, it, they are starting to do courses in university now on game development, but still application development and computer science and you know traditional sort of web applications or whatever is a much larger field so there's game development and then there's unity if you wanted to do that and that's an even thinner slice do you know what I mean so finding specific developers to just do unity mobile iOS and Android which is even thinner is very difficult in one place now in Shanghai there's tons of people around um, who do game development and I've met game developers but they it, it is a programmer's market in unity basically everybody's after them everybody wants to find them uh, in a city like shanghai uh, it's difficult to give them a package where they'd be like you know okay great i'll leave my company and come with you and it's very expensive so it depends on the location so if you're looking to hire people online like you're talking about then that's great the pool of talent is much higher and it's great for developers as well because maybe it's difficult for them to find work in particular areas uh, and they might be doing their own apps and things but still it's much better if they do have like a stable regular monthly income so uh, that's just one of the things that kind of dawned on me this past few months as we've sort of done more hiring and we've tried to hire in Bangladesh specifically but it's been very very hard to do that it only works much better recently and we've got some great guys working with us when we said okay fine we'll just be an online team and we'll we'll work remotely um so to get down to the question i'm sorry to, to trail off there uh um how do you trust them it takes time that's the only thing like what i think your question a few weeks ago was what if they just run off with the project and then publish it themselves well the first thing is uh you need to have some kind of you know general company rules in place of course you need to tell them on email clearly say hey the work that you do for your company is um it cannot be used in your own games or distributed online or shared it is 100 percent belongs to best game studios uh, the other second thing is developers will probably a lot of the time developers will continue to make their own games and projects um 
that's probably going to happen anyway in any situation like uh, even in my company before in EA games the guys who were working as artists they had jobs on the side as well uh, and it, that that's likely to be happening if that does happen what you can put in your agreement is just say okay you're going to continue to build your own iOS and Android games that's fine but they cannot be competing with the types of games that you are making you have to be very clear on that they, if you're building say for example like a um, I don't know, a, a town builder game like SimCity, uh, they're doing the work for you. They cannot release their own town city simulator game as well. That's just completely not on because obviously it's like you're training them to compete with you, which is a big problem. Um, that's the situation on iOS and Android, of course, because anybody can access, anybody can build for iOS and, and Android. The barrier is very, very low which is a big, big problem, a big problem. Um, we're trying to get out of that ourselves by doing, uh, we've just started to do Apple TV, which is great. I'm excited to look at that. And then big VR projects as well for Oculus. That's a big thing. The, bar the barrier to development is a little bit higher because of the cost of an Oculus, um, uh, an Oculus Rift, you know, we've just <laughs> we just ordered another one, which is like seven hundred dollars. It cost us or uh, six hundred and fifty or something like that, and the other one was four hundred and fifty euros, and mine was seven hundred dollars. So the barrier is a little bit bigger. Okay, so um, so that's the thing. Put it in the agreement to say if you're going to build your own games, or you can build your own games, but they cannot compete with our games. Okay, you, that that is not allowed. Um, how do you trust them as well that they're not going to just run off with your project? is it just takes time and what I would say is just do small projects with them for however long you feel comfortable you know so give them say a two-week project uh, and then get it published and then another two-week project and get it published or however long you feel comfortable with then in the worst case situation if that developer says um, they're not gonna finish the game or and they just take the project and publish it themselves it's only two weeks you know uh, so you, you, the the risk is kind of low uh, in that situation, and you you know it's not like a seven or ten month project or whatever. And then over time, you can start to build it up, and you can start to you know extend it as you become uh, closer with the developer, as you feel comfortable working together. Uh, if you've got some kind of bonus system in place, that's good as well, of course, because then you know developers are more likely to stay with you and then work with you long term. Uh, but definitely start with small projects first, absolutely. Um, what I would do is what we always do when we're hiring for Cobble Play or Panda Tap is we do like a two week test uh, and we say okay finish this game in two weeks once it's published and it's live we'll pay you now a lot of developers do know me through the channel and through the forum so maybe they feel a little bit more comfortable with who I am and they, and they know me better and they know that I'm a genuine person and run a genuine business and we're gonna pay you don't worry uh, but for somebody who's just online through email, that's a little bit more difficult, of course. So what you could do is you could keep it down to an even lower time frame with something very simple. Say like one of the catch-up games, you know, and they just finish it in one week with very simple artwork. And the goal is, one, to see their coding skills, of course, that's a big thing, uh, and see what they can produce, the quality of their games. But the other big thing is testing the work process together that's a really big thing so that is uh, what time are they going to be online uh, do you have set times together when do they send it to you how often do you communicate uh, how do they accept feedback you know is the feedback like they're just saying no I don't want to do that I want to do what I want to do and that's not going to work so within that one week what you can say is okay finish this really simple game for me and this is how much I'll pay you and then that's the test you can also do a second test as well so then that way you know it's like maybe two weeks the second test and then you pay them just for that one and as it goes on you can explain look I want to hire you full time of course but we have to go through this test period first and I think that will make you both feel much more comfortable and so that answers your question here about you know how do you make the developer more comfortable uh, because they're just a you know you're just online and you're just a voice on the other end of the email uh, Skype calls obviously a lot better Skype video calls of course uh, I know that you've done a bunch of videos for the channel as well uh, and the forum and you've posted them on here so definitely share them as well and I think developers will start to get to know you a little bit better as well because it is a little bit worrisome for developers who are you know spread around the world and they're just you know waiting for one month to receive payment 
Um, but then once the once they're comfortable with you and you've gone through a, a couple of tests, then you can say, right, well, well, what we'll do now is we'll pay you at the end of every month, and that's how it goes from there on. So yeah, just the only answer I've got is just to start small, do very small tests, don't do big projects at, at first. Uh, stipulate in your communication together in your email you've laid out the rules for the company you don't compete together with what you're working on or your projects don't post the projects around uh, you know don't work for anyone else during this time either because you're you know a full-time employee and the other big thing as well is I would say um, on top of that because obviously We've 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 worked remotely with our with our guys now, and I've worked remotely with guys for years now. Um, one of the the good thing is if you get like a regular system, say like you want to publish a game every two weeks, for example, or every month, uh, you guys have to sit down and communicate about those targets before the work begins, and then make sure that they're you know those targets have been hit as you go. Maybe don't make them one month in the beginning. Maybe just make them two week targets, uh, because then the good thing is, you know, y you don't know if the developer is, you know, uh, uh, chilling out till four in the afternoon and then working two hours and then not working till tomorrow and blah 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 blah. Um, if that's a worrying thing, it doesn't matter so much as long as the targets have been met. Um, you do want to stick to obviously kind of regular hours when you can both communicate. Uh, but if there's any times where you you're not sure what they're doing, that's okay so long as they're still hitting those the uh, you know those deadlines. Um, so just some basic project management, and they have to manage their own time as well. Um, one of the uh, one of the things is as well is uh, just to add to that a, a separate thing, but make sure that you do have like regular calls uh, with the guy as well or girl, whoever it may be. Um, to make them feel like they're part of a team because for some developers working remotely on their own in their bedroom as like a freelance or full-time remotely is can be a bit difficult for some people i know that there was like developers i worked with before and they've basically had a little bit of trouble working like remotely at home because they've been used to this office situation uh but for some people it works great they work they're happy with it for me right now working remotely in this situation i don't think i would ever change this now like if somebody asked me to go martin you got to start going nine till five monday to friday to this office i don't i, I think i'd have a really difficult time doing that uh, but for people who are not used to it, who are used to the office structure and situation, it might be a little bit difficult for them to get into that. So uh, that's just the other point is make sure they've got plenty of communication. Uh, and then if you do hire a second developer as well, obviously connect those guys together on Skype, have your Skype group, because we have like several Skype groups now and the guys are all, you know, chatting together back and forth, asking questions about code. Uh, and sometimes just you know just talking and knowing that they're part of a team that's really important um, because we are I mean for example cobble play now um, uh, we have me and I'm just trying to count how many guys one two three four five so five guys cobble play and then panda tap we have one, two three four five and five guys panda tap now as well so um, uh, obviously I'm doubling up on those as well but uh, yeah, so it's making sure that you know those guys are all part of a team once you start to grow as well. So, uh, but yeah, let me know if you've got any questions. Best Game Studios, uh, everybody, definitely check out Best Game Studios. Uh, links to his games down here on the Google Play Store. Uh, I'll just click on them as well. I think maybe it will open the page, but mine is very very slow right now. So just give that one second uh, but yeah thank you for all of the uh, the posts as well of course or i've seen some of the videos and you're talking about you know your journey towards opening up your own studio which is awesome very very cool to do uh, more videos coming soon guys more response videos big focus recently for us is uh, obviously continuing to build and improve our ios and android games getting better at that getting better at aso as always super important but also the new platforms vr apple tv uh looking at amazon fire tv eventually mac builds uh, all of these different platforms that we're just not touching and hopefully trying to get some of those platforms where the requirements are higher where the the barrier to entry is higher so there's less competition because android especially google play is just extremely crazily 
uh, competitive right now because the barrier to entry is so low. Uh, so there you go, Best Game Studios, guys. You know, check out like Ragdoll Physics, uh, Push the Ragdoll, My Little Unicorn, uh, the, the, the uh, Ukraine War as well, the games from Best Game Studios. Uh, thanks again, guys. More coming soon, and I will catch up with you later. Happy developing. Bye bye.